Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Embabazi. 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 Ruhanga we to an embabazi. Atukunda. I wish I was in Runyachara service. People would be quite a good idea. Hallelujah, praise the Lord That is a God of grace It is that grace that will see us through 2023 No matter what comes our way He will see us through, praise the Lord I join my brother, Reverend Frank To welcome you all to 2023 This is the first service of its kind Praise the Lord in this year. We welcome you all in your different capacities. Friends online, you are warmly, warmly welcome. You may not be having a stable network, but we pray that the network stabilizes, that we move in one accord. We will we receive you visitors in the name of Jesus. Thank you for coming to worship with us. Take those seats until the Lord recalls you to retirement. Hallelujah. Yes, we want to also welcome in a special way our elders, the Tibetans that have chosen to give thanks in this service for the great things the Lord has done. Let me ask them to stand up. Tibetan family, Tibetan family, you are warmly, warmly welcome in a very special way. Warmly welcome. Thank you for coming. Uh, wow, and our professor. Thank you, and uh, the two professors, the Murangas. You are warmly welcome as well. We know you are part of the Twitters, but we receive you also as priests. Thank you for coming. Canon Diana is here. My colleagues are here. And uh, our spouses, uh, Rukundo, Fiona is here, Musinguzi. I've not seen Helen. Uh, yes, Helen has a special seat. So we bless the Lord for her. And my wife is here, Solome. Thank you for praying with us and for praying for us. The Lord has seen us through the year and we continue to look forward to him. We want to thank you for the support that you have given the church throughout 2023, 2022 and up to today, you are still giving the support, supporting the work of the Lord, particularly the building, the construction project. We bless the Lord. Our target was not hit last year but we trust the Lord that this year we will hit two targets. Amen. If you are not believing me, I'm believing the Lord for two targets. One, to get to the wall plate. Two, to get the roof onto the chapel. Hallelujah. Because we are not too far from it. We are just there. Almost there. Please visit the site from here. You pray over it. Normally, first Sunday is a building Sunday. But this one is a special one because it is the first Sunday in the year and also uh, the first day of the year. So we have not gone that side of construction, but we know we will get there. We want also to thank you for supporting us as the clergy. We stand to say we are because you are. Hallelujah. So may the Lord continue to give you the grace to support us as we minister 
in your midst and as we minister together. Especially this year where we are calling for unity. We are calling for unity in service and growth. We want to ask you, I want to ask you before I go into the sermon to open with me Habakkuk chapter 2. Open with me Habakkuk chapter 2 verse chapter 2 verses 2 and 3. Habakkuk chapter Open with me Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 2 and 3. Shall we read it together? Irrespective of the version of the Bible you have, let's read it together. And the Lord answered me, write the vision, make it plain on the tablets, so that it may run who, with, who reads it. For still the vision awaits its appointed time. It hastens to the end. It will not lie. If it seems slow, wait for it. It will surely come. It will not delay. Hallelujah. I just want to ask to get into a small exercise. If you have a pen and a paper, write, write. You have your vision for this year. You have your plan for this year. You have your agenda for this year. Write it. Write it down. As a student, write it. As a worker, write it. As a businessman or woman, write it. As a, an employee, as a servant of the Lord, write. You may have your phone. Please feel free to write it. In your phone. In your phone. And this is forming your, forming your agenda 2023. And you are going to hold the Lord accountable. Basing on Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 2 and 3. And I want to trust the Lord that he is going to do it. At the end of the sermon, I'll ask Reverend Richard to come and lead us into praying over those things. You lay your hands on them. The autonomy 28 declares, you, whatever you lay your hands on shall be blessed. Hallelujah. And yes, as you write, I was sharing last night the same scripture. Those of us who were here last night and we wrote, please just remember those, and at the time of prayer, you engage into the into prayers. Amen. Yes, I was sharing with them a testimony that when I was at Singo, I moved from Singo to Nabinonya. And when I moved to Nabinonya, I wrote what I needed in a wife. So that the time I get to White Ababili, I will not regret. Amen. And I placed that paper. I wish I can find it. I don't know. I think I lost it in my Bible. But I remember it was Good News Bible. And it grew old. It went off the cover and some pages started going off. But as each time I was praying and I was getting a... a I was, it was used, by the way, to look comfortable in the single life. But I did not want to give the devil room to cause me to do what was not right. So what I did was to pray for everyone, every point, every point, every point. And let me share with you one of them. I was, um, I was doing some course at UMI, and we were in a discussion group. I don't know what happened. I think we were getting money to do work. And somebody beeped in my wallet. There was a, a, a portrait of our wedding. And then some ladies said, wow, you have a very beautiful wife. You have a very beautiful wife. And ladies who are here, you know what it means for some lady to say you are beautiful. Amen. <laughs> so, and I think I am convinced that she is. I was saying that to, 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 to really let you write. And I know the Lord will do it. Hallelujah. You can place it in your Bible that wherever you come, you pray over it. The only problem is that we have gotten addicted to soft copy Bibles. You wait the day that the phone will freeze. Yeah, or that tab. Yeah, and you will not have a hard copy. <laughs> yeah, you will also crash. You will also 
Tell your neighbor, don't crush. Get a hard copy Bible. Amen. Let's pray as we begin the sermon. Father, we thank you that you have called us to come together this morning and celebrate your goodness to us and to all people who have crossed from 2022 to 2023. Here we are, oh Lord. We are asking you to come and reign. We are asking you to come and speak to us. We are asking you, Lord, to rekindle our faith in you. We are opening our ears out and inner that, Lord, you cause us to hear as you speak. We open our eyes, Lord, to see you, that, Lord, we shall behold you face to face in this year, and we will resolve to be united for your service, for the growth of your church as a body, and, as a, and for the growth of the nation of Uganda. Silence every voice, and let your voice be loud and clear to us. I choose to humble myself before you, that you speak through me as your vessel. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. The topic says, united for service and growth. Every year, it is now a practice of the church, of the province of the church of Uganda, to give us a theme that runs for the whole year. So this is the theme as received from the province of the church of Uganda. Our fathers in the Lord, the bishops, who are the custodians of faith in our church, sit together and they see the direction. And so this is the way they have desired us to go this year. Pray with me. It is a theme exposition. I bit have, I, I bit have a long sermon, but pray with me that I will bring it short, I'll make it shorter without losing the meaning. And if I take a bit long, you bear with me. We take this from Ephesians, Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapter 4, verse 11 to 16. But it, is, it, it also intertwines with the gospel we have heard. The gospel according to John 17, 1 to 24. United, let me begin with a few definitions. United, being united means being made one, combined being made one, being combined. We have seen from the gospel, our Lord Jesus Christ pleading, our Lord Jesus Christ praying, interceding for his disciples, interceding for his followers, that they will be one. He wanted to leave them as one, except, and he said, all you have given me, I have kept, except one who is predestined for getting lost. My prayer is that and has been that when I'm handed over a congregation, I remember the words I was given at the party of my ordination as a deacon. Somebody told me, you are going to be, I have an accounts background, and he said, now you have been accountable for people's businesses. You are going to be accountable for God's people. If they get lost, you are accountable. My prayer is that none of you gets lost. Hallelujah. So that when I am handing over probably at my transfer I will hand over a congregation that I received. And probably bigger than what I have I received. Hallelujah. That is my prayer. Help me to tell your neighbor, please don't be destined, predestined for getting lost. This year determined to be one and part of us, determined to be part and parcel of us, that we move in unity. Because united means combined, means to be one. And Jesus pleaded, and he said, there is in, they are in the world, there are many things that are going to cause division, but I am praying that they are one. In this year, we plead for unity. Hallelujah. Unity for a purpose. Which, what is the purpose? Growth. Growth. What is the purpose? Service. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So, every believer who is saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ is incorporated into the body of Christ, the church. All of us are incorporated into the body 
of Christ, and that is the church. And that's why we sing that the church is one, that the church is one. Our prayer is that we will continue with the family spirit united together. I love the family song for St. Luke's in Tinder and St. Luke's uh, Mlago. Because in Tinder, I understand copy from Mlago, Chapo. Eh? Join bond. Eh? And I think Bugolovi, I'm, I'm here in also Bugolovi. But I said, we are one family. Join bonded together we are one we are a family our desire is that we get bonded and that's why we always have agape dinner so that we bond that's why you have tea so that we bond so if you're a member of chapel next week we are resuming tea and you just run away know that you are against our unity <laughs> amen and you are against our oneness amen church has to be one and we must enjoy the resources that God has given us and the gifts as we are going to see. We want somebody who is not a professor to rub shoulders with these professors. Amen. Someone who is not a CEO to rub shoulders with the CEO. And some of you are members of the same organization working together and you are a boss. Now how will that boss squeeze you when you are, working from, when you are worshiping from the same church? Yeah? And you have bonded with him or with her. In Christ. So we are brought together. We are united in Christ through salvation. Hallelujah. Through salvation. If you are not born again, you are against our unity. If you are not born again, you are against our unity. Jesus said, if they are not against us, they are for us. If you are not in Christ, you have not accepted Jesus Christ, this is your year. Because we don't want you to be against us. We want you to be for us. Amen? When you are not in Christ, when you are not in salvation, whatever comes, you do a PhD. Whatever comes, you do a PhD. Pull him down. Pull her down. Please don't pull us down. Don't pull us. Help us to go together. Amen? Help us to walk together. And even in marriage, walk together. Hallelujah. You know, sometimes when we are joined, let me demonstrate with my wife. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. When we are united and wedded, we are joined like this. We are supposed to be together. If I am walking very fast, she pulls. And we walk together. If I am very slow, and indeed I'm slow, but she's, even in decision making, I am slow, but she is very fast. If I am procrastinating, she keeps the things what? Moving, so that we move together. If I am falling, she lifts me up. Hallelujah. United we stand, divided we fall. To God be the glory. May the Lord give us that salvation of walking together as brethren. When we digress, the brethren bring you back. Hallelujah. We want to see the revival fellowship happening in all saints, Luesa. And we want to demonstrate revival where somebody will walk in light and say you are wrong. Put things right. And you will put things right. Amen. Where we will have disciples discipling others. In a revival when you get saved, they give you somebody to walk with you. Last night we had a very big harvest of people who came to Christ. I hope the discipleship team and missions, you have given these people disciples. So that they walk with them until they mature in salvation. Because this is what Paul is talking about. That we shall no longer be children tossed left and right. That is united. May the Lord give us that unit of purpose. Please don't be united in PhD. Tell your neighbor, don't be united in? In PhD. At all levels, let's be united. At council level, executive level, at working level, let's all work together. Jesus prayed for the disciples and said, it is my prayer that you are one. And he told them that's when they will know that you are my disciples. Praise the Lord. Service. 
Service is labor of the body. Oh, body and mind performing at the command of a spirit. It is the labor of the body. All the body, labor of the body and mind performing, performing at the command of a spirit. We have our spirit. Who is Jesus Christ? We have our spirits. They have given us a command. Hey, my friends, in, in Uganda, we have a saying. Hallelujah. When a boss makes a request, indirectly, he has released, or she has released the what? A command. Amen. I said, Anglicans, this, the, the matters of faith are in the hands of the bishops. They have commanded that this is our theme. We have to follow suit. Hallelujah. Sometimes I get, I speak this microphone. Sometimes I get rebuked from our friends, our brothers and sisters in the Miranda Diocese. And I say, you, 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 including this week that has just ended, I go to work with someone, a big person in the Miranda. I said, you, 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 you. And I said, my, 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 my elder, come in. I am implementing your command. Amen. I am implementing you. You commanded me that you go. And so what, why, why can I, how can I refuse? So for me, I am there to implement. You are the decision maker because he's an archdeacon. I told him, you are the decision maker. You send the decisions. And me, when you tell me go and implement, I implement. If I don't implement, I'll be in trouble with you. Friends, we have a command from Jesus Christ that we are to be united. United for a service to implement what he has commanded us. He commissioned us to serve, to, bear, to be witnesses wherever we will go and wherever we are. In this year, will you serve wherever the Lord has put you at his command? Not at the command of your boss. If you serve at his command, then you'll be able to obey the, boss, the boss's command. Christian service. Christian service, because we are not looking at any other service. We are looking at Christian service. Christian service is the act of doing the work for showing God's love to others with a willing heart. Hallelujah. Doing God's work, showing love to others with a willing heart. People who have come to serve in the church we are serving with a willing heart. And when we don't serve with a willing heart and a grumbling heart, we are not blessed. I have seen clergy serving with grumbling hearts all the time, and they have not been blessed. I've seen bishops serving with grumbling hearts. They have not been blessed. I've seen Christians serving with grumbling hearts from council, from where they are not, from different ministries. They have not been blessed. But I've seen those that have served with a willing heart, out of love, being blessed. Hallelujah. The Bible says I was young. Now I'm of age. I have never seen the children of the righteous for a second. All begging for bread. Hallelujah. Friends, for us as clergy, we are not paid salary. We are not paid a salary. The good thing I'm talking to professionals. We are not paid a what? A salary. Because if you pay us a salary, I wonder whether you would maintain us. Where we are working 24-7, I'm enjoying my sleep and a call comes. Somebody is being strangled by demons. And then you wake up, you start, you start and call and call and call. Like you are seeing our voices, all our voices. <laughs> they have gone. Last night you were here in a battle. Last night you were here in a, in a battle field. Who would pay you to working overnight? Even when you work overnight, they tell you rest in the day. Some people who are here last night are really stretching themselves. Some of them have not known whether even it is daybreak. So how much would you pay that person? 
You are there on a Sunday, on a holiday. Somebody has kicked the bucket. You have to run there. From a funeral service, you go to a wedding. From a wedding, you go to a baptism, and so on and so forth. Friends, that's why they call it stipend. Some of us, when they have called us to do some work, the question is, how much is this work? How much? Somebody one time in some other church told me I didn't know that this having had cancelled, this is what it means. I would not have accepted. And if I resign any time, please uh, bear with me. What we are offering for out there for money, we are offering it here for free. No, you are not offering it for free. You are doing an investment in the kingdom of God. And the God who rewards will reward you. Service with a willing heart. Growth is a process of development and maturing from infancy to maturity. And this is what verses 13 to 15 of Ephesians is all about. It is all about growth. If I can draw your attention there, Ephesians 4, 13 to 15. Until all attain, until we all attain the unity of faith, and of no knowledge of the Son of God to mature manhood to the measure of the stature of the faithful faithfulness of Christ, so that we may no longer be children tossed to and fro by the waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine by human cunning, by craftiness in deceitful schemes. 15. Rather speaking the truth in love, we were to grow up in every way into him who is the head into Christ from whom the whole body joined and held together by every joint with which it is equipped when each part is working properly, makes the body grow to that it builds, so that it builds itself up in love. Praise the Lord. That is growth. The process of development. Friends, we have been young for a long time. It is high time we grow up, Anglicans, it is high time we grow up. Tell your neighbor, it is high time you grow up. People have fished from us for, enough, for a long time. Hallelujah. Why should the Anglican church be a fishing ground? Why do, they, why do Pentecostals establish a church at the neighborhood and it grows faster than the Anglican? Because they know that is a fishing ground. Why shouldn't we feed our youth? The challenge we are having with our neighbors. They are going to feed the flock. I went somewhere in, with my children. When we came back, they said, Daddy, never take us back to that church. We want all St. Chapel Reza. We have not got anything. We didn't go with my wife. But when they got out of the car, that was the song. Never take us back. Never take us back. There's nothing to get from there. It is just noisy. They are just making noise. We don't hear even anything. They even don't have a children's church. Don't take us there. It is high time we fed. How can you have a, a, a telephone numbers? You have the one who prays for the headache. You have the one who prays for the marriage. You have the one who prays for better performance. You have one who prays for the business. Mature. Hallelujah. And you say you come to the Anglican to hear the gospel and then go outside for miracles. Miracles are happening here. Last night you were hearing testimonies of miracles that happened here. Hallelujah. People receiving their healing from here. And it is high time to start knowing that miracles are not Pentecostal. Miracles are for believers. They are signs of faith. Hallelujah. 
Miracles are signs of faith. Jesus said when you have faith in him, all these signs will go with you. Miracles are signs of faith. So we should grow up as Anglicans. We should stop thinking there are no demons. They are there. Tell your neighbor demons exist. Even James, in James, he writes, James writes and says, demons believe that there is Jesus. And demons know that you are a believer if you believe in God. When Paul and Peter stood, and then the other guy also stood, they said, for Peter we know. For Paul we know. Who are you? Who are you? And they will attack you. They will attack your children. I was speaking in a baptism on 26th and I was calling upon parents to pray for their children. Anglicans, let's release our children to go back to school with blessings. Having prayed for them, why do you, why do you wait pastors to go and pray for them and deceive them? Stand in the word and declare a word. We don't want to read the Bible. We want people to read Bibles for us. Let's grow up. And what we are throwing is what the Pentecostal is speaking. We have thrown hymns, choir. We have thrown hymns. But look at what the Pentecostal is doing. They have picked them up. Seriously. Seriously. We have thrown the word. They have picked the word. Street preaching was for Anglicans. Testimonies in buses were for Anglicans. Before the coming of these Pentecostals. But now we have left it to them. Witnessing. The Lord makes, gives you a miracle. In Ruesa, you don't want to witness that the Lord has blessed you from Ruesa. Because there is no power of the Holy Spirit in Ruesa. Who tells you? Because they do not cast out demons. Who tells you? Demons have, have, have scattered here, here, in this hall. We have heard them scream in this hall. Even last night, it happened. The other night, our, the many nights, our son, last born, had been, well, the demon is had always attacked him. They had always attacked him spending sleepless nights. One time he told me that the lion is here. The lion is here. It went to swallow me up. And the man was coiling in the corner of the bed. I laid the hands and started praying and praying and praying. So I said, Dad, it is moving out. It is going out. It is in the corridor. Said it is outside under the mango tree. Daddy continued praying. It has gone out of the gate. And he told me, Daddy, can I sleep? It will not come back. Yes, sleep. And the guy slept till morning. <laughs> Friends, we are here to be used of you by God and to serve each other. Why do you battle with the fetishes? Bring them and them. Some of you gave birth to twins. I don't know what they call it in Nyankore Ruchiga and any other language. Yeah? But you perform the rituals. And you have those things, those fetishes under your beds, in your wardrobes, wherever you have them. Even some of you, your wallets are now swollen. And they are, they are, when somebody looks at it, may think you have money. And yet you have charms in there. <laughs> And you have charms in there. I used to see my brother with a very heavy wallet. And I would ask for money and he says I don't have. So every time I was saying, but where would, how come? The wallet is full. Little did I know that they are charms. Until he surrendered them. And we burnt them. My father is a twin. We burnt those fetishes. He's a heir to his father. We burnt those fetishes while I was at Uganda Christian University. Ten years now down the road, my father is still living. My own brother, our firstborn, that one I'm telling you about, would come and box walls, would come and do funny things, endless dreams, bad dreams all through. But one time I prayed for him and I said, God, show us the source where this thing is coming from. And he had those fetishes. Bambi, they gave birth to twins and even the twins lasted for two, for two hours and they passed on. But then they had to perform the rituals because they were not born again. And even us as a family, we were not born again at that time. So when I prayed after getting born again, and I said, this guy has to be delivered from this thing. So when we prayed, 
at 6 in the morning, I was working with moves. 6 in the morning, he came at my door. And I was praying from St. Peter's in Anguru. He came at my door and said, you know what? I think these are the things causing me trouble. Do you have somebody who can burn them? I want to burn them. I said, fine. At that time, I was still young in salvation. So I called Kanun Sam to message, you know him. I called him and these people know him. I called Kanun Sam to message, who was our vicar at St. Peter's. We took them to St. Peter's and we burnt them. My sister-in-law shied away. I said, no, me, I'm not going there. Who is the Nalongo? Shied away. And we went. So we burnt them. And when we burnt them, up to today, no problem has come associated to those things. Their first daughter is now an engineer. She's now an agricultural engineer and working. The second one, they had a lot of spacing. The second one has just done senior four. And the last one is in senior two. And this, the one who is in senior four was a baby at that time. She was a baby of weeks. And we burnt them. Now, what are you fearing? Some of you have these things. Bring them and we burn them. Hallelujah. My, my uncle was shouting at me because we said we are going to inform all your brothers. We told our dad. We are informing all your brothers that you have gotten saved and every fetish, everything to do with evil has to go. And he said, you tell them. So I called all of them. And, some of, and one of them was shouting at me. Give them to me. I asked him, are you a twin? He said, I am not. I asked him, uh -huh. why do you want them? You, are not, you want us to run mad? You don't want, and so on. I said, no. Then he shouted. He said, shut up, you are young. I said, I'll switch off my phone, and you shout from your phone. He said, okay, you give them to me. I said, okay, you go to the village and get them. He said, give me transport. I said, you are finished. <laughs> if you get there before us, you get them. And you do not access them because they were locked up. And man them. Anglicans grow up and stop this. The shell of faith. Two weeks ago, I lost my uncle, a young brother who was a follower to my dad. We went for burial at our home. He was living in Nijinja. So in the night, they surprised us. They told us, we are burying at your home. We said, okay, my father lives this side now because he's ailing. So I said, okay, let's go. And I told them, we are going to our home. It will be performed. And they thought I was joking. They said, fine, 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 no rituals. I said, okay. We released the team to go. And we released those intercessors to go. They went prayed through the house. My sister, my younger brother, my brother who follows me is a prayer warrior. And my sister, elder sister, and our elder brother, they went. They had to cover the spiritual covering of the whole place, including the graveyard, where the, the burial ground, where we were going to bury. So when I arrived, the burial I said, okay, they want to perform rituals. Yes, I said, fine. My wife is a witness. She was there. I called all of them, my uncles, all of them, including our, our, our mom who is now a widow. I said, come, our aunt. I told them, come, tell me, uh -huh, update us on the barrier arrangement. Long story short, they told me, they briefed me of how they were going to perform rituals. I told them, I told you before you left, didn't I? said, yes, now we cannot wash and again dry from the ground. You are not performing any ritual here. You are not performing any ritual here. And I said, let's forget that chapter, move on, and we moved on, and nothing has happened. Let us grow up, let us stop being tossed left and right. No wonder we are being caned. And if you receive a cane, may they continue to cane you. If they are taking your money, may they continue to take the what? The money. You come here, we pray, you get a breakthrough, you don't even tithe. You don't even tell others, this year is a year of growth. Hallelujah. It is a year of growth. And not only us, we are not ordained to perform miracles. No. Even you, because you are a believer. It is not us who perform miracles. It is Jesus Christ. 
who performs miracles. Praise the Lord. So Christian growth is the process of becoming more and more like Christ. When we place our faith in Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit begins to process and to make us more like Christ until we, we get to maturity. Our target is not to have these Christians who can't even pray for food. When you get there, they tell you they hide in us, the clergy. They tell you, no, when you are here, you are the custodian of faith. We cannot pray when you are here. Please pray for the food. Praying for the food. We are not here to pray for the food. We pray for big things. Amen. <laughs> Give us the fetishes and we burn them. And you are set free. Amen. Yes, not praying for food. They tell you to pray for food and you begin our Father in heaven. Hey, praying for food. Our Father in heaven. Pray for food. Then you start. We thank you for those who, grew, who planted. We thank you who, for those who bought and brought to the market. We thank you for those who brought, who went and bought from the market. Hey, Banang, we are hungry. We want to eat. <laughs> Praise the Lord. United for service and growth. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 1 to 6, verses 11 to 16. Paul discusses various individuality within the unity of believers. Friends, unity does not mean conformity. Unity does not mean conformity. We are united but with our individuality. Hallelujah. Yes, you have your own indifference, your own differences from me. When you look at all of us, the three of us, your pastors, we are gifted differently. Eh? My raising of the voice cannot be equated to that of Frank. <laughs> Even if I wanted, I cannot. Hallelujah. Even if I wanted to dance, I cannot make the strokes Richard makes. <laughs> but we are together.
by the revival, Namirem Fellowship Friday and the East African Revival Fellowship. You go there, this thing of mixing, you need to enter on Sunday. Uh, women the other side, men this side. Even if you are husband and wife, you sit the other side, she will sit the other side. And I am comfort. I get there and I get comfortable. Hallelujah. So what gift do you have that you are sitting on that would benefit somebody? Gifts are tools to build the church with love. And if they are not in love, they become weapons to fight. They become weapons to fight others. Hey, ask your neighbor, do you have a gift or do you have a tool? <laughs> a weapon. Yeah. Yeah. Some people have gifts. There is one of our bosses one time told us, I have a gift of disorganizing people. Yeah. <laughs> 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 he told us he has a gift of disorganizing people. I disorganize them and they reorganize themselves. So what gift do you have? Is it a gift or it is a tool? Tell your neighbor, this time we want you to have a, a, a what? A gift, not a tool, not a weapon. Eh? Not a weapon. Have a gift which is a tool to build the church. Hallelujah. Not a tool to fight, but a tool to build the church. Hallelujah. Remember, we in unity. That's when the church will grow and move and go to launch into the deeper that our, our, your, our friend Frank was talking about. In the Corinthian church, we read from chapter 12 up to chapter 14, gifts were being used as weapons to fight. Over the, over, over the gifts that the Lord had given them. All through, and so Paul had it right and sought out those differences. Telling them that the gifts that you have got they are gifts to build. There is no gift which is greater than the other. One of the greatest challenges that the church is facing today is the issue of disunity. And this disunity is as a result of the gifts the Lord has given us. Some people have been gifted differently. But then those gifts have been abused. And so you find conflicts. You find disunity. For example, disunity over the choices that the pastor makes. When I come here and we don't do the Nicenic Creed, you see that one. I've, for my, that our church has ceased from being an Anglican. There is no Apostles' Creed. There is no... And you forget that the common book of prayer, we the priests swear, those of you who attended the ordination last month, we swear to uphold the common book of prayer. And that common book of prayer in the rubrics, it provides room for the priest to take decisions. I love it in the Luganda way. You can read it in your Nyankole, those who have Zabuli. It says, as the priest will so wish. But you find there are so many and they are pulling each other. This unity over the funds, the use of the funds. The priest says this, the, church, the, the others are saying this. They are saying this, this, and this unity continues. Up to now we have churches in Kampala where a, a vicar is not a signatory to the account. Each time that it comes, it is war. Wrangles over the elections. Wrangles over elections. I was sharing with you how I organized the election is in one day, and somebody wrote to me a, a, a single spaced letter of four pages stopping me from doing elections. And in St. Nicholas Calera, there was physical, physical fighting. Physical fighting. The youth were, vast, were, were against the elders. And so they say the youth must become a head of lady. So after the election and the one who was of their preference, their choice went through. This man who lost found this youth chairman 
and gave him two slaps. Yeah, the one who made me fail. Two. Thank God the, the priest was there. So the priest had to come in and grab the youth and say, please, please. Otherwise, the old man was going to be finished. Rangos. This unit of a music preference. Sometimes I, <laughs> with the choir, bring this. I say, I want this. And we only want to, please, please slot in a hymn. <laughs> but we have remained together. Amen. This unity over programs, they come. This unity over the powers and authority. And they, even among the clergy. Even among the clergy. And I want to say at Lueza we have passed the interview. We have passed the interview. But I'm knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> and Canon Diana is here. She knows what I'm talking about. Please continue with the team spirit. May God give us the grace as Lueza God has helped us. We have not had a split. And may God help us to walk together all through. Five years down the road, we have not been split into factions. May God give us the same spirit to walk all through. I found it very difficult, but I thank God for his grace to bring the small congregation of, of, of Wandegia together. It was not easy. Professor used to minister there. He knows it very well. But by the time I left, <laughs> hallelujah, even the new service had been birthed. And the Erunyachitara service, Erunyachitara service, and it stood out to be the best service. But it was war for those days. Even we still have such wars. We have a church in, in, in Imbuya. It's called St. Paul's Ukuvu. It's a Rukbara service. If you want war, say you want to begin another local service in, it, in Ukuvu. May God give us the grace, Church of Uganda. Why should the election of a bishop become a problem? But it also defines who, you, who, who come to be a priest, the people that you send to become priests. That's where the problem is. And whom do they use? The Christians. Tell your neighbor we have a part to play. This is not a nice sermon. This is not a nice sermon, but we have to preach it. Hallelujah. Is it North Chigezi? Is it, is it not North Chigezi? Me, where Bishop Patrick is acting. Is it North Chigezi? Why should we spend all this time? Huh? Why? He mumenyeke. Uganda mbagambe bakoleshi. They should come down. There should always be one leader. Amen. May God give us the grace, Christians, to live together and always iron out our differences. We who have tested the, the goodness of unity at Lueza, may we be ambassadors of unity outside there and call people for unity so that when there is an election, people should submit. And I'm telling you, they are using you. For us, we clergy, what do we have to stand against? No. We take oath to obey. But the devil comes in us, and then we bring the devil to you, and then you also fuel, you put in the money. Because clergy, we don't have the money to put in those things. But it is you who give us the money to put in those things. May we mature. Praise the Lord. So God gives us instructions and knowledge that we will help that will help us to operate better as united as a united church in Jesus Christ our Lord so our, we are called to focus on the unity as believers in this text Paul calls us to focus on unity he emphasizes the uniqueness of the individuals the individual believers who are supposed to come together and as I said, unity does not mean conformity. Come with your different difference, but let's work together. Put and blend. Just as you who is married to your wife and you have been married for years, please 
It is because of blending. I don't know whether you changed your wife to be the same you are. No. But you have blended the differences and you have stayed together for those number of years. Peter says each one of us has received a gift so that it, we serve one another as stewards of God's, God's grace. We are looking at unity and there are three things. There are three arenas in which we, uh, we should have unity. Number one, Unity in our work. Let me draw your attention to Ephesians chapter 4 from verse 1. You have your Bible. You can read it there. From that verse 1 to verse 6, Paul is calling us to walk in a manner worthy of our calling. So we should walk, we should be united in our walk as Christians. He's speaking of the way that we should live our lives as Christians. He is calling us to have unity in a way that we live. For example, stealing. Does it matter if you are not, whether you are working in the church or not? Whether you are working in the church or not, you should not steal. Integrity. Whether you are working in the church or in the secular organization, you should be a person of integrity. That your yes is yes. Your no is a no. But sometimes yes is in the fellowship. Outside the fellowship, the yes is not there. We get surprised. People who say they are born again, and then when they die, or when they lose people, we see them performing rituals. And you wonder. If you are born again, you must declare and tell people, Nobody should perform any ritual over my what? During my funerals, over my dead, my dead body. Nobody. But when you get born again and you keep quiet, they will drag your body into whatever they want to do. I had an uncle who was a pastor in the Pentecostal church. I think he died two years ago. And he was staying here in Bunga. But when he died... And this, all here all here was praise the Lord. The vigil was an overnight. And when we went to the village, he was a prince. When he went to the village, they said, this man has been honoring the culture. This man has been even giving us money to do the work, to perform all the clan rituals and functions. This man has been buried as a mulangira. And my friend, it was terrible. As the service was going on, the others ones also were performing rituals the other side. And I said, what is this? If you are born again, be born again. If you are not, please don't, don't pretend. This business of standing and saying, I believe God. People should know that you are typically what? A believer. In your walk. In your walk. I have always told people, whether I am putting on this collar, whether I'm not putting on this collar, I should walk as a priest. Hallelujah. This collar has never been ordained. It is me who has ordained. So whether I am having it or not, you should look out how I am. Because my life must speak. That's what Paul is saying. That I am born again. That is what Paul is emphasizing. The second thing Paul is talking about is unity in our ministry. Unity in our ministry. And he speaks about this from verse 7 up to verse 13. He speaks of the gifts God has given to us as a church for ministry. Which, we must, lead, which, the, which must lead us to unity and maturity. God, by his grace, has given us the different abilities to serve him in ministry. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 8 to 10, God, is, God has taken people out of captivity and he has given them, blessed them 
with the gifts that they are to use in their service. And here he calls different people and assigns them different responsibilities as we are seeing. And for me, as I was preparing, I discovered that these gifts are compared to the hand of a human body. The hand of a human body. For example, number one, the thumb. The thumb represents the apostles. In that text, Paul talks about the apostles, that they were the first one to be called. The thumb is the only finger that touches every other finger to enable other fingers to grip things. Do you agree with me? Do you have any other finger that can touch the rest apart from the thumb? Huh? Uh, no wonder any RM is using the thumb so that they can grip, they can grip everybody. Yeah. So the thumb touches every finger. Now the apostles have to reach out to everybody. The apostles were given the responsibility of witnessing to the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, or the, the responsibility of preaching the gospel. Will you be the thumb? When you are witnessing, don't segregate. This one is an Anglican. I will, I will speak to the Anglican. This one is a, no, I will not speak. You know those people, the revivalists and the reawaken. Before these days, I've taken long without meeting the reawakenings. But I know what they do. If you are in a taxi or in a gathering, people don't know you. The moment they get there, I am so and so. I fellowship here. I got born again on this day. At this time, this was the gospel that was preached. So at this time, I realized I was like bad love. I gave my life to Jesus Christ. Up to now, the Lord has helped me to walk. Are you saved? Hmm? Are you saved? And when they meet, they also say, my brother, my sister, are you still saved? Witnessing does not matter to whom you, you witness. Because you are called to be the thumb. Hallelujah. Preach with me. We are called to be the thumb. And we are, this year, let's purpose to touch everybody. Amen. How can you be born again alone in your family? Uh, how can you be born again alone in your organization? How can you be born again alone? You are not going to force people to, be, to get born again, but witness to them. Ours is to witness. So let's be thumbs to touch everybody. Praise the Lord. The second illustration is that of the four finger, this finger here. This four finger represents the prophets or the prophet. And the prophet, this, I mean, let me just first talk about this finger. This finger is an index finger. It is the one that, point, that points, it shows direction, and it shows the way. So the, the prophets, prophets were people who showed the way. There were people who showed the direction of, to the people who were, in, uh, who, were, who were not believers at that time. And so they proclaimed the word. The Lord used them to reveal what had not been revealed. To speak what was going to come. And so we have prophets of doom and we have prophets of hope. Will you be a prophet of hope? When new things begin, will you support? Will you pray? But also, will you sound a warning? Prophets were a warning. They were warning congregations of the danger that was to come. If they became adamant and they did not believe. Will we be prophets of hope in this year 2023? See somebody and proclaim a word. Speak blessing, not cursing. But you, you become a prophet of doom even to your own family members, even to your own children. 
you become a what? A prophet of doom. And some people we see in a channel that you can guess. This child will be dense. This child will be dense. Eh? And is your own child. Will you be a prophet of hope in this year? There are some people who have already been prophesied that they will, de they will die. Hmm? That's not a good prophecy. And be a true prophet, a prophet not a, a false one. One prophet in Uganda during presidential campaigns prophesied that one of the presidential candidates was going to die in the campaigns. But none of them died until the one succumbed to the natural death by sickness. And quite, quite a, a long way after the campaigns, will you be a true prophet? The other, the other finger is the middle finger, which is this one here. This one represents the evangelists. The evangelists. This is the middle finger which stands out among the rest and reaches out. So prophets, prophets I mean evangelists, stand out. They, they touch everybody. Amen. They reach out to everyone like this finger touches and it is the longest it, it, it goes deeper than any other finger. So the prophets will come. And the prophets will come and preach. And will scatter you, scatter you, scatter you. And then after, the pastor has to come in. And bring you together. He comes in with the gospel. And touches even those things that we don't want to hear. And brings them out. He rebukes. We are, you know that we have an evangelist. Is Frank here? When he stands here, no, he's going to talk about the Bikanja. He's going to talk about, yeah. <laughs> and not many people like to hear the Bikanja thing. Yeah. There is this demon of uh, the Bachika. What is it? Yeah. The demon of the Bachika, Nyabinch. Yeah. We'll talk about the Nyabinja and so on and so forth, and then he will leave you scattered, and then all of then we will come and and say. <laughs> and put you to order. So that is, those are the evangelists. And we still have such people today who come and preach and sow the seed of the gospel. But we have the pastors. And the pastors are represented by the ring finger. The ring finger. This one here. This is a finger of love. This is a finger of care. This is a finger of faithfulness. Hallelujah. Married people, a finger of love. Number one is love. Number two, care. Number three, faithfulness. Number two is faithfulness. Will we love? Will we, will we purpose to love this year more than we have loved? If last year left you scattered as a husband and a wife, may this year bring you together. If you are not caring, may this year cause you to care. If you are not faithful, may this year bring faithfulness to you. And so, a pastor is called to love. A pastor is called to love irrespective of the color, irrespective of the race, irrespective of the capacity, whatever, irrespective of the tribe, rich or poor, tall or short, brown or black. A pastor is called to love. That's why Jesus said to Peter, tend my sheep, feed my lamb. That is what the pastor does. And I believe at Luesa, we are trying to do that. A pastor reaches out in a season and out of season. May God give us the grace as pastors to practice this in this year more than before. Care, care. Remember Jesus left the 99. He said, who of you will not leave the 99 and go and look for the lost? Help us to find the lost. 
Amen. And faithfulness. Faithfulness. This finger here. Faithfulness. The other day I was telling you that I came with one wife and I will go with one wife. And people are thinking it is a joke. Eh? People are thinking it is. No, it is not a joke. By God's grace, your wives are secure. By God's grace, your daughters are secure. Hallelujah. Because he gave me one. And I will seek to this one. Until death. Faithfulness. I've always joked that you are all beautiful. Women, you are all beautiful. But you are not more beautiful than my wife. Until you come to convince, to be convinced that your wife is more beautiful, you are not going to settle. I was reading about one flesh in Genesis 2.24. One flesh. And a commentator was saying, he was comparing it to the people who graze cattle. That those who graze cattle stand here and look over there and it looks very green. And the grass looks tender for the sheep, for the cattle, or the sheep, or the goats. So he takes the, them over there. Only to get there, to find that the green that is there cannot, is not tender for the, what? For the animals getting disappointed. And so he said, other women are just looking greener. They are not green. They are not. They are not green. Married people, hallelujah. You will jump from a frying pan into fire. And nowadays we are releasing fire, isn't it? Fire, 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 fire. <laughs> so you will receive what? Fire. If you have planned to be unfaithful today. Fire in the name of Jesus. If you had planned in this year to commit adultery, to commit fornication, fire. In the name of Jesus. We are called to be pastors. But he also talks about teachers. Teachers. That is this finger here. Teachers. The, the little finger represents teachers. This little finger balances. Hallelujah. It balances the hand. It balances the hand and represents the teachers. So it is a sign to show that nobody is insignificant. Nobody is insignificant. Do you know that in our country, teachers, the, the, the teaching profession is one of the, main, the least recognized profession. And now if you are teaching arts, you are finished. You better cross. Or you better find another profession. Huh? It has, you, you better pray for special anointing of the science. It has become terrible. But when you look at all of us, we are what we are because of the teachers. Whether they are formal teachers or they are informal teachers. In the primary, we used to sing for our teachers. Um, so mesa sana kutenda. Um, so mesa bamtende. Na ba itaba doctor ya ba so mesa. Na ba itaba engineer ya ba so mesa. Um, so mesa sana kutenda. Um, so mesa bamtende. But today, the teachers are not recognized. The Anglican Church is a church known for teaching the word. Is a church known for teaching the word. No wonder other churches are looking down upon us. But we cannot be balanced without that finger. So this finger balances. Teachers are supposed to balance. They go a bit of the prophetic. They go a bit of the pastor. They do a bit of the evangelism. They, they balance. And that small finger also teaches us that nobody is insignificant in a society. I've already said if this finger went on a strike, my friend, you will see fire. So may God give us the grace to walk in unity. There are three. There are three important results of these gifts working together in unity. 
Number one is equipping the saints. We equip the what? The saints. We equip the saints. Number two, we build the body of Christ. When all these gifts are working together, these are the results that come. We equip the saints, and this is what Paul is saying in this text. We build the body of Christ. Number two, we cause maturity. We cause maturity. When we work together, we cause maturity. And this is what I began with, that we should come together and mature so that we are not tossed. You find every wave taking us, taking us left to right. We must cause maturity and growth. When we work together, the church grows. People wonder why Reza is growing. It is because of the sense of spiritual maturity in Reza. The sense of unity, the sense of love, the sense of brotherhood, the sense of care, practicing these gifts together. But Paul is telling us also to grow, to have unity in growth. When you read verse 4 to 16, 14 to 16, Paul is saying when we do that, we will have unity together. And the following will be the evidence of unity. I mean growth. Will be the evidence of growth. And when we work together, number one, stability. The church will be stable. If we have grown as church of Uganda over 50 years now, I think, as a province, 60 years, 60 years as a province, we are still fighting to get a bishop. Are we, are we really grown up? May God help us. If we are still selling the land, are we really grown up? If we are still fighting in elections of councils, are we grown up? May God give us the grace that we grow. As a nation, we have spent also, we have moved. We are now over what? 50 years. But corruption, witchcraft, sorcery, jealousy, they are still reigning. Are we a nation that is, says, for God and my country? Are we a nation that is saying, oh, oh, Uganda, may God uphold thee? Are we a nation when we are still discriminating ourselves according to the tribes and the, the rest? The second thing that will evidence our growth is truth joined in love joined with love. Truth joined with love. Speaking the truth in love. Rebuking error in love. Correcting in love. Not being brutal at one another. The other one is cooperation. Cooperation. Believers are members of one body. And so we should cooperate. Remember the five fingers? They all work together to grip something. They all work together to pick. They all work together to hold. May God help us to work together as one body in cooperation. Friends, when we do that, God will, God will reflect what God designed the church to be. A church united, a church growing together. A church serving the Lord and serving others using the different gifts that the Lord has given to us. I therefore pray that this year will be a year of unity, that this year will be a year of love, that this year will be a year of faithfulness, that this year will be a year of service, will be a year of growth in all aspects of our lives. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. 
I, Reverend Richard. Let's appreciate God with a hand clap. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you, Chaplain. Yes, yeah, bear with us. On a f such a Sunday, you really have to be slow. Don't rush. You really need a someone. Yeah, you have a long way to go, so we really needed this kind of someone. So thank you so much, Chaplain. We are going to change a bit. I'm going to ask the weddings to get the baskets. We are going to give in the house of the Lord. And then after giving in the house of the Lord, we are going to pray for the offertory and also the prayer request. You still have the prayer requests? Uh-huh. Okay, so weddings, you are going to do the needful because we want to serve on time. Then the choir, mm -hmm. lead us in praise and worship. And then after that, we will pray together uh, and mm -hmm. then continue the service.
So prepare to give thanks. Just begin to warm up as you dance for the Lord. They are, they are giving thanks in a special way. So we'll join with them. Those of you know them, just come and support them to give thanks. So let's continue dancing for the Lord as you come forward. As yeah, you prepare. Choir, continue. Amen. We follow Borubanga, Mlokuli, Bedye. We follow Borubanga, Mlokuli, Bedye. We follow Borubanga, Did you find some happiness in the house of the 